Hello everybody. So what we're going to look at today is going to be the half and double angle formulas. Now, if you look in the name of the homework assignment, they'll actually refer to half, double, and they'll also say uh, power, power reducing uh, identities. And um, so basically the power reducing identities are just what is called here in this picture, the alternate form. So this right here, these are the power reducing formulas. And they're, they're not any different than the half angle formulas. They're just like rearranged slightly. Like if you take one of these and you square both sides and then change the name of the angle from theta to theta over two, then you get those formulas. Um, but they're really just the same formula. So right here is all of the formulas that you need. And uh, so where these come from is, uh, well, where, where are these? So where these come from are from the identities in the previous section. So like if you take a look at one of them, like let's look at sine two theta, for example, let's look at this one right here. So we know that um, if you wanted to do, do sine of two theta, sine of two theta would be sine of theta plus theta, right? And so if you use one of the identities from the previous section, which are the, uh, what are they called? The sum and difference formulas, I'll put them right here, just momentarily. Right, I can do this, I have faith in me. So you do that. It's not working. Okay, haha. <laughs> Got it out of the way. Nope. Move this around. Let's put it right here. So um, if I use this uh, sum and difference formula with the sine, right, then what I would have is that the sine of theta plus theta, so we're using theta for alpha and beta in the formula, would be simply sine theta cosine theta plus sine theta uh, cosine theta. But then you realize that it's just sine theta, cosine theta twice, and so that's two sine theta. And uh, sine theta, cosine theta. And that's that, right? So that's where this identity up here comes from. And uh, yeah, so I mean, that's just really it. Just do that for the others on here. I'm trying to delete the sum and difference formulas because we don't need them. And uh, there you go. So um, you'll notice that there are uh, several, not several, three versions of the cosine two theta uh, identity. And what that one is uh, for is you can use the Pythagorean identity, this one, like sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals one. And um, so if you derive this first identity, then you can re either replace the cosine with one minus sine squared or the sine squared with one minus cosine squared and you can get the other two. So again, that's not really a new identity. Um, there's just three versions of it. What is this? Huh, I'm going to leave it there. Mysterious. Um, let's uh, let's go ahead and get started then. So we've got the double angle formulas and the half angle formulas. We'll look at a double angle formula first. So um, what are you going to be asked to do? Well, they're going to be questions that are pretty similar to the kind of questions that you got in the previous section, really. Uh, so we just want to make sure you can use these formulas. So they'll say something like, given the tangent of theta, is 7 over 2, what is tangent of 2 theta? Right? And uh, it's going to be easier than it would have been in the previous section because the formulas are slightly simpler. So what is tangent 2 theta? Well, I've got the formula right up there. It says that tangent of 2 theta is 2 tangent of theta over 1 minus tangent squared theta. So then all you're gonna do is you're just going to simply put your tangent theta in, which is seven over two. So you just go two 
7 over 2, that's a 7 over 2, over 1 minus 7 over 2 squared. You have to square it. 2 times 7 over 2 is 7. 1 minus 7 over 2, you have to square it, 49 over 2, like that. Uh, there are different ways to do this. Um, you can just do 1 minus 42 over 2 on a calculator. That's one way to do it. I think I have a calculator. Seems like I ought to. I had one. It's gone forever. No way to pause it. Okay, there it is. Sorry about that. So 1 minus 42 over 2, which now that I think about it was a waste of time. Uh, 1 minus 42 over 2, it's 2 over 2 minus 49 over 2, so negative 47 over 2. Then you're dividing by a fraction, and hopefully you know by now that to divide by a fraction, you multiply by the reciprocal of that fraction, so you get um, negative 14 over 47. And uh, does that reduce? I don't think so. Let's see. What? Can I not do math? Hold on a second. Oh, ha ha ha. Back it up. This is wrong, right? This is this is all wrong. I can't I can't do math. Uh, seven over two squared is actually forty nine over four. Oops. Sorry about that. I put a 2 there. Okay, so 1 minus 49 over 4 is going to be negative 45 over 4. And that is 7 times negative 4 over 45. And that is negative 28 over 45. And that is your answer. All right, so pretty straightforward. Again, um, a calculator that does fractions is a good thing to have because you can't put in decimal answers. You have to put in exact answers like this uh, on the computer. All right, um, that's exactly the same. Let's pick a different one. Okay, of course you are gonna have this type of question, uh, what is equivalent to one plus tangent theta tangent two theta. And you might remember this from the previous section. What you're supposed to do is just apply whatever identity you can apply and after you do that, you're going to simplify and hope that stuff just kind of cancels out. So those are your steps. So what will it look like? Well, you've got one plus tangent theta, right? And then we've got tangent two theta. So we want to replace tangent two theta with what the identity says it is, which is two tangent theta over one minus tangent squared theta, like that. So there's what my identity says. And then what they expect you to do might seem a little strange, but we will do it. Um, I'm just going to write it like this. I'm not going to move the two out front yet. So what they expect you to do is to simplify this as a difference of squares because you learned from when you learned how to factor stuff that like a squared minus b squared equals a minus b a plus b, right? And so this is, you know, an a squared and this is a b squared, a squared minus b squared. So you can apply that identity and what you're gonna get is on top, nothing changes, so 1 plus tangent theta times 2 tangent 
data. And then on the bottom, you're going to apply this identity. So the A is one and the B is tangent theta. So you end up with one minus tangent theta, one plus tangent theta. And once you do that, you should recognize that you have a one plus tangent theta on the top and also on the bottom. So you cancel them out and you are left with two tangent theta divided by one minus tangent theta. And this is on your list of stuff. So mostly it's just knowing that uh, you can factor this down here because it's one minus tangent squared theta and that's something that factors as a difference of squares. Okay. Let's keep going. What else do we have? Uh, we have other stuff like this. Let's go ahead and try another one of these because I know that these are a little bit tricky. Um, so again, they want us to simplify. They don't say it that way, but they say what is equivalent to. So it's the same. It's worded the same as the previous question, but I'm just not writing it that way. Cosine to theta, uh, cosine alpha. I said theta, but alpha. All right, cosine two alpha over cosine alpha minus sine alpha. All right, so again, we want to apply an identity. And then we want to simplify. Now the question is going to be which identity because we have a cosine two alpha on top and there are actually three choices for what that is, I believe. We'll look momentarily, three choices. So what are cosine two alpha equal to are all three of these. We've got uh, cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta, two cosine theta minus one, and one minus two sine squared theta. And we could use any of them, okay? So we could use any of those at all. And yeah, we could use any of those at all. But I'll tell you what I'm gonna use based on what I see here. So I see down here, cosine alpha minus sine alpha. And I remember the trick that we just applied, right? So remember we just we just used this identity, right? In the previous problem, a squared minus b squared, a minus b, a plus b. And so I'm looking at this identity right here. And I'm thinking, well, if you apply the difference of squares formula to that, isn't that going to be cosine theta minus sine theta times cosine theta plus sine theta? And it will be, and so I think that's the one we want. Because I think we can cancel it out with that denominator in a bit. So three choices, we're gonna use this one. Hey, did that just delete like letters? Okay. So I think the one we want is that uh, cosine two alpha is equal to cosine squared alpha minus sine squared alpha, just based on what the denominator is here. That it doesn't have to be that one that we use, but this is gonna do something for us, right? So cosine two alpha, no, we're, we're applying the identity, sorry. Uh, so apply the identity, we're gonna get cosine squared alpha minus sine squared alpha over cosine alpha minus sine alpha. N then we're gonna use, again, a squared minus b squared is a minus b, a plus b. So that is gonna give us cosine alpha minus sine alpha cosine alpha plus sine alpha over cosine alpha minus sine alpha. So we're gonna take that. We realize that we have the same thing on the top and on the bottom, so you cancel those out. And we get simply cosine alpha plus sine alpha. So really, it's just a matter of understanding on these problems that they expect you to use a certain identity because they are going to want you to do this. Because there's nothing wrong with the, using the other identities, right? 
It's just that if you use one of the other identities, you're probably going to get something that's not on your list because this is a multiple choice question. And so you're trying to get the answer that they have. Um, OK. Let's try this again. Not again, different one, completely different one. But similar to the previous section. So this one says uh, sine theta is uh, 5 over 13. Theta is in quadrant 2. What is? That says what sine? <laughs> What is cosine 2 theta? All right. Now, you might remember from the previous section that in the previous section, we had to uh, find what the sine was, right? We had to figure out, sorry, if we had the sine, we needed to figure out what the cosine was because the identity involved sine and cosine. So in previous section, Uh, we needed to compute uh, cosine theta off to the side before before trying to solve the problem. Uh, not this time, because remember that for the cosine, we actually have three choices, right? We have three choices for the identity again, so we've got these three. And so because we have the last two here, you'll notice that the middle one only has cosine and the last one only has sine. So we don't need sine and cosine, we only need one or the other. So that's nice for us because we can just use the, uh, the last version of the identity there. 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. So we just, whoa, it's too so big. So we can just use this one. Cosine 2 theta is 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. And then we'll just put in our number, 5 over 13 for our sine theta. So we're simply going to get 1 minus 2 5 over 13 squared. So we get 1 minus 2 times that's going to be 25 over 169. So 1 minus 50 over 169. It's going to be 119. Is that going to be 119 over 169? Yes, it is. Okay. So that's that. And so again, remember that we had a choice. So we just used, we can just uh, use the version that only needs the sign. And that's just to save work. You're not gonna get the answer wrong if you use one of the other identities. It's just that you would have to do more work to get the answer. That's all. Um, let's see here. Now here's an example of where you can't avoid it though. If I say that uh, cosine theta is root five over five is what I was going for. Root five over five, theta is in let's say quadrant four, um, and what is sine two theta? This time, you can use your identity here. Sine two theta is two sine theta cosine theta, but you should realize that you're missing the sine, right? You don't know what sine theta is. Um, so off to the side, you need to compute sine theta because we need it for the formula. So again, the way you do this is you just write sine squared theta plus 
cosine squared theta equals one. You put in what you know, which is that the cosine is root five over five. So you have sine squared theta is root five over five squared, that should be a plus, equals one. So sine squared theta is square this, you're gonna get five over 25, so that's like one fifth. I put another equal sign there. So five over 25, which is one fifth. So you get um, sine squared theta is one minus five over 25. So sine squared theta is 20 over 25. So sine theta is, you have to square root this. Uh, square root plus or minus square root 20 over 25, which is, we need to do two things here. Number one, square root the top, square root the bottom. So square root the top, you're gonna have square root 20. Square root the bottom, you're gonna have five. Now, we need a plus or a minus, and that's why they tell us we're in quadrant four. So quadrant four is here. So in quadrant four, the y value is negative, right? The x is positive, but the y is negative. And so if the y is negative, then the sign is negative. So the sign is negative, so this should have a negative on there. And um, what else should we do? We should rewrite this, to not rewrite it, but you should simplify this. So square root of 20 is square root four times five. And then square root of four is two. So negative two root five over five is what the sine theta is. And so all of that work that you have to do on the side, that's to calculate this, just so you have it for the formula that you actually wanna use. So we have two sine theta now. So you have two sine theta. Sine theta is what we just came up with. Two, negative two root five over five cosine theta, cosine theta is root five over five, and then you just multiply this out. So you have um, two times negative two is negative four, root five, root five, over five times five, which is 25. And then square root five times square root five is five, so you have negative four times five over 25. So then you should reduce that fraction. And uh, finally, we get uh, negative four over five, I believe. Hopefully we did that right. Yeah. Um, all right. So I think that's pretty much all I wanna do for the double angle formulas. So what we wanna look at now is um, some of the other formulas, like the half angle formulas, which we will do momentarily. Yeah, here we go. Now the problems are not different really for the half angle formulas. So let's say half angle. So, um, they'll just do this instead, right? So they'll say, example, uh, sine theta is negative seven over 25. Okay. Theta is in, they tell you the quadrant, typically, four. What is cosine theta over two? All right, so why is it a half angle formula? Because it's half of the angle instead of double the angle, right? Uh, we were looking, when it was a double angle, it's a two theta. It's a half angle, it's a half. So, you know, makes sense. Um, we're not gonna do anything any different. So what we need to do is we need to know what this formula is. What's the cosine of theta over two? So let's refer to our answers here. So cosine theta over two, and notice that it has a plus or minus there, right? Like right here, notice that there's a plus or minus in the formula. That's why you need to know the quadrant because you're gonna need to know um, where theta over two is. 
So it's going to be a little bit tricky, but we'll do it. So plus or minus square root 1 plus cosine over 2. So 1 plus cosine over 2. Plus or minus square root 1 plus cosine theta over 2. All right, so I see a couple of issues. So again, one issue is that we have to think about the angle, like what quadrant we're in. And the other thing that we have to think about is um, what's the cosine, because we, we were given the sine, okay? So let's think about those two issues. So let's just think about the plus and minus sign first. Um, think about the plus minus. That's our, what we're gonna do. Now, what we're gonna do is this. So we're in quadrant four. In quadrant four, the theta, well, what are, what are the angles in quadrant four, right? So if you look at the unit circle, right, this is angle zero, this is 90, this is 180, this is 270, right? And then you come around again and you're back up at 360. So if you're in quadrant four, you're here. So that means you're in between 270 and 360, right? If you're in quadrant four. So where is theta over two? Well, all you have to do is, is if you just divide this by two, because we're actually looking for cosine theta over two, divide by two and you're gonna get 270 over two is 135 less than theta over two less than 180. So you're in between 135 and 180. So after you divide the angle by two, what quadrant are you in? You're in quadrant what? Well, again, look at the picture, right? If you're in between 135 and 180, you're actually up here, right? You're in quadrant two. Quadrant two. So if you're in quadrant two, should the cosine, which is what we're trying to calculate here, should it be plus or minus? And uh, cosine theta over two is negative, right? Because the x value is the cosine and quadrant two has negative x values. So negative. So all of that was just to say that we know it's actually a minus here. All right, now what? Let me just uh, do this real quick. Let's keep our, hey. Okay, so we thought about the plus or minus and we figured out that we're in quadrant two where the cosine is negative. Now, the other thing we need is we need to know what cosine theta is. So cosine theta, that's the other, other thing we need. Our formula needs uh, cosine theta. So we'll find it the way we always do. So we have uh, sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals one. We're told sine theta is negative seven over 25. So we'll put that in. So we have negative seven over 25 squared plus cosine squared is one. So that is uh, 49 over 625 plus cosine squared theta equals one. So cosine squared theta is one minus 49 over 625 which is, not gonna do it in my head, because I found my calculator. Uh, what? 576 
over 625 and then I'm going to square root that. Well, where's this stupid answer? Oh, there it is. 24 over 25. Now, this is cosine theta. So you, you do have to be careful here. So this is cosine theta. So what quadrant is theta in, right? There's two angles, there's theta and theta over two. So when we're talking about theta, theta is here in quadrant four. Theta over two was in quadrant two. But theta is in quadrant four. So we're in quadrant four right now because we're talking about cosine theta. And, when, and in quadrant four, the x value is positive. So the cosine is positive. So this should be a positive 24 over 25. Right? In quadrant four, cosine theta positive. All right, so we have it. So we have the cosine, 24 over 25. So now once we know that, we can put it in up here. Cosine theta 24 over 25. So we get uh, negative square root 1 plus cosine theta, which is 24 over 25 over 2. And you see, we have to be careful with the signs or we're going to change our answer. So got a negative out front. 1 plus 24 over 25. is 49 over 25 over 2 so that is negative square root 49 over 50 so that is square root negative 7 over square root 50 but square root 50 is square root 2 times 25 which is 5 square root 2 so negative 7 over 5 square root 2 rationalize the denominator so I'm going to get negative 7 I said negative 7 square root 2 over 5 times 2 so negative 7 root 2 over 10 and that would be your answer so a lot of work for that one but um, you know the new thing was this here thinking about the plus or minus for the theta over 2 right so it was theta over 2 that we didn't know the sign of so I had to figure out like where that was and I also needed to know where theta was because we also needed to calculate the sine on the cosine there. So you needed to know different angles, theta and theta over two in order to do the problem. Um, okay. Let's see, I wanna do one more of these. Yeah. Okay, we will do one more of these with a half angle. So, same type of problem. Uh, sine theta is negative four over five. That's not the same one, right? No. Um, in quadrant three, find sine alpha, nope, theta over two. So again, what we're going to do is there's some stuff we're going to need. We need to know what do we need to know before we start. Number one, uh, what is uh, cosine theta? Because we're going to need that for our identity. And they gave us sine. We need cosine. Um, 
the other thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to know what sign is uh, cosine, nope, theta, what, what, sine theta over 2, that's what we're doing. What sign is sine theta over 2, because that's what we're trying to calculate. If theta is in quadrant 3. And we'll do that with like a little inequality again. So let's do those first before we even apply our identity here. So um, let's just find the cosine. We know how to do it. We've done it many times now. Sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is 1. One of these is 4 over 5, negative 4 over 5. Come on. Negative 4 over 5 squared plus cosine squared theta is 1. So 16 over 25 plus cosine squared theta is 1. So cosine squared theta is 1 minus 16 over 25, which I'm just going to write the answer this time, 9 over 25. And then cosine theta is going to be, when we take the square root, plus or minus 3 over 5. And we need to know which based on where theta is. So remember, theta is in quadrant 3. Right? Is that right? Did they say 3? Quadrant 3 is where theta is. Yeah. So that means cosine is negative because x and y are negative in quadrant 3. So we have that. Okay, that was half the battle. Well, one third of the battle. <laughs> Number two, what do we need? What is the sine of sine theta over 2 if theta is in quadrant 3? So again, write out one of these. So like theta in quadrant 3 means theta is in between what angles? So I'll just refer to this here. We have 0, 90, 180, 270, and then back to 360. So if you're in quadrant 3, what are the angles? Right, quadrant 3, you're here, so you're in between 180 and 270. So if you divide everything by 2, that means 90 to 135. So if you're in 90 to 135, wait, hold on a second. Did we do the other one wrong? No, okay. <laughs> I, I felt like this was what happened last time and I knew we were in quadrant four last time. <laughs> All right, no, that's right. 90 to 135. So if you're in 90 to 135, where are you? Oh, that should have been over two. If that can just stay crooked. I don't care. I'm a rebel. All right, 90 to 180. So 90 to 180 is just here, right? Somewhere up there. So you're in quadrant two. So when they say theta is in quadrant three, that means theta over 2 is in 2. So theta is in 3, but theta over 2 is in 2. All right, so we have that. So now we know that. So if you're in quadrant 2, what should the sine be? Um, so sine of theta over 2 is what? Positive or negative? In quadrant 2, the y value is positive, so the sign is positive. Positive. All right. So this is all just preliminary work here. Now we can actually use the dumb identity. It's not dumb. I shouldn't have said that about it. It's a good identity. Um, sine theta over 2. Wait. Yeah, that's what we're looking for, right? Yeah. Sine theta over 2. Where's sine theta over 2? We need the identity. Where is it? Sine theta over 2. There it is. It's the same as the previous one. It's just got a minus sign in it in, inside the radical. It's 1 minus cosine theta over 2 radical. So the formula is 
plus or minus square root one minus cosine theta over two. Now we happen to know that sine theta over two is positive. So we are going to take just the plus. And then one minus cosine theta, we know that it's circled negative three over five. Careful with your signs. So that's what we get. So one minus minus three fifths is one plus three fifths, which is eight thirds, no eight fifths. Eight fifths over two, which is square root eight over 10, which is square root four over five, which is square root, nope, which is two over square root five, if you square root the top and the bottom separately, and then if you rationalize by multiplying by square root five over square root five, you get two square root five over five. So this is gonna be the answer that they want if you look at the answer in the book. I'm just gonna check if they take two over square root five, hold on. They say simplify completely, but you know sometimes you know they let you not. We'll see. Yes. Um, they do not require you to simplify it completely, even though it says simplify it completely. So you can type this in, or you can just type this in, and that's fine. Okay. So they did not require it, even though they say that they do require it. They're liars. Um, okay. All right, last one. This will be quick, I think. Uh, power reducing. All right, so you use the power reducing formulas to reduce the powers, okay? Um, I, that sounds dumb, but that's what they do. So the idea is they are these, the alternate form of the half angle formulas, and what you're supposed to notice is like, you know, you have a power there, second power, and on the right hand side, no power. So the power went from two to one, and that's why it's called power reducing. Now, when they're gonna make you do these, they typically make you do it more than once. So they're gonna do something like this. Here's a very typical question. They will say, trust me, okay, there we go. Um, so, reduces powers, dot, dot, dot. Um, so point is they'll say uh, write as only first or uh, write with exponents of one only. So exponents of one means there is no exponent effectively. Okay, now what are we supposed to write as exponents of one only? Well, I don't know. I'm gonna make one up. I'm gonna say sine to the fourth of, could be anything here. I'm gonna go with um, five alpha, and I'm doing that for a reason. I'm putting a five there. Well, not a five, but there's a reason why I'm doing this. So let's write the identity that we need. So the identity that we need is this one. Uh, sine squared, what is it? Let's look at it. Way up here. Sine squared theta, one half, one minus cosine two theta. One half, one minus cosine two theta. One half, one minus cosine two theta. That's the identity. Now the thing is, is that where they have a theta, we have a five alpha. That's something that you need to worry about. Not worry about, but it's different, right? Uh, the other thing is that we have a four and they have a two. So you can't apply it yet. 
So what you have to do is you have to rewrite as a second power. How do you do that? Well, sine to the fourth is actually sine squared squared. Right? If you square a square, you multiply the powers, right? Um, so you write it that way, and then you can apply your identity. Now, when you apply the identity, again, pay attention, we have a five alpha instead of a theta. So you have to replace that everywhere uh, in the formula. So we're going to have, uh, first of all, the whole thing squared, and then one half parentheses, one minus cosine two theta, but theta is actually five alpha. So what do we get? We get one half parentheses, parentheses, um, one minus cosine 10 alpha. So notice what happened there is that if it was a five alpha, it turned into a 10 alpha because theta goes to two theta. So whatever it is, it doubles. So if it was, if you started with a five theta, you get a 10 theta after you apply the power or after you apply the identity. Now we're not done because we're supposed to write this with exponents of one only. I can't have an exponent of two. I have an exponent of two. So what you have to do is actually multiply this out. So I wrote equals, but no. So you can square that one half on its own and then you need to square the one minus cosine 10 alpha separately. So that's going to be one fourth. And then when you multiply this out, that's one minus cosine 10 alpha, one minus cosine 10 alpha. You have to remember how to like FOIL basically. So one times one is one. One times negative cosine 10 theta is negative cosine 10 theta. Then you've got cosine 10 alpha times one. I said theta a couple times, sorry. Uh, minus cosine 10 alpha. And then finally, you've got, uh, I can write it, the last two multiplied, which is going to be plus cosine squared 10 alpha. So I'm going to write that out here. One minus two cosine 10 alpha plus cosine squared 10 alpha and this is in the way so I'm erasing the whole thing but you can do it if you want pause the video or something okay so there you go now you're not done because we still have a power of 2 so right oh no we still have a power of 2 here so you've got to do what You've got to use the identity again. We went from four to two, now we have to go from two to one. Use identity again. All right, so almost done here. So we've got, uh, go move way over here, one fourth, one minus two cosine 10 alpha, that's fine. Now this cosine 10 alpha, you need the identity. Now the identity for, um, cosine squared is the same as the one for sine squared except it has a plus sign so I'm just gonna do it it's one half parentheses one plus cosine two theta but again we don't have a theta we have a 10 alpha so it's two times 10 alpha so the same thing that happened before happened again so we get this. So we have 1 fourth, 1 minus 2 cosine 10 alpha plus, and we have to multiply this out. So 1 half times 1 is a half. 1 half times cosine, that's going to be 20 alpha, is 1 half cosine 20 alpha. Like that. A lot to work. We have a like term here and here. So we have 1 fourth three halves, 
one half plus one is three halves, minus two cosine 10 alpha plus one half cosine 20 alpha. And if you want, you can multiply that one quarter through and get three eighths minus, looks like one half cosine 10 alpha plus one eighth cosine 20 alpha. And finally you're done because we have no exponents or anything and that was what we were trying to do. Okay. Um, so yeah, so basically you just have to keep applying the identity until there's no exponents on anything. So we had to apply it twice here. If, if this was like a cosine to the, or if it was assigned to the uh, sixth, or cos or assigned to the eighth, we might have to do this three times or something like that. Something like that. Um, lots of work. And every time you apply the identity, the angle doubles because of that theta on one side, two theta on the other side. Um, okay. So I think that's it for that identity, though. So if you if you can follow that, then you're done. So I will call this lecture finished.